Those who saw our show earlier today already know with optimized processes and the extensive product range from Ceratizid, the most incredible projects can be realized. Who would have thought, for example, that a bicycle frame could be milled from a single piece of aluminum? Our next guest showed us how to do that. Let's welcome Brian Lawrenson and Markus Brunner to tell us more about milled from a single piece aluminum bike, Phrase F160. Thank you, Harris. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Ceratizid Insight number three. Today, we're going to be talking about a very exciting and innovative project that Ceratizid was a part of. We're talking about the F race bike, F160. This is a bike frame milled from a solid block of aluminum. As machining experts, we are not necessarily interested so much in how the bike looks at the end, but we're really interested in how it was manufactured. In order to look at that more precisely, I brought my colleague with me, Marcus Brunner. Hello, Marcus. Hi, Brian. Thanks for the invitation. Thanks for coming. And yes, Brian is right. I was involved in the project. And the biggest challenge we had with this bike was really to mill it out of a huge block aluminum and to get such a beautiful and nice sculpture of a bike. But I would say we are talking first of all to our customer, Bernd Ivanov, who is the designer, developer, and manufacturer of the F race bike F160. So Bernd, what made you decide to mill this bike frame out of a solid block of aluminum? Also, we have the machine, have well, we have and the machines there, and, there. and many bikes have CNC parts on them. So I thought as many parts as possible have to be CNC milled. And then just the idea to use CNC for everything. Then I did some research on the internet and found out that there was already two similar projects, uh, which however were not concluded successfully and never really came to the market and no bikes were sold. Then I already knew, uh, I was aware that it was going to be difficult, but I thought it just uh, give it a try. It was meant to be a hobby in the beginning, after work on the weekend to deal with the subject and then just to make the construction and just to give it a go. That's actually how it started two years ago. What's the advantage to milling the bike from a solid block of aluminum as opposed to welded tubes, for example? The big advantage is, of course, that we can take the material, which is aluminum 7075, which is actually very, very stiff. I would like to say that it's similar to spring steel in terms of properties. It can be bent, but it always comes back to its uh, original shape. And that's something very important. And then just in terms of design, I'm not bound by any regulations. For instance, like by pipes, I can completely let off steam to simply produce a bike that is different and entirely different from normal bikes. What are the performance advantages to this type of manufacturing process, Bernd? Exactly. That's what I didn't know in the beginning. Uh, what would happen when the bike was finished and when the first people rode it? But I was sure, I was positive, the, and, and my gut feeling said, you know, this is the right way, let's try it. And when we had the first bike ready to go and the first tests were conducted, it really came true. Uh, through the spring steel, uh, the test rider said it was extremely much feedback from the material through the bike. It's very true to track. It's actually different from other bikes, so to speak. And that's a huge advantage that we now have a bike that is a little bit heavier than a regular normal bike. But the feedback that the bike gives when you ride it is uh, really extremely good from the frame. Bert, can you describe the bike for us? So in terms of design, it's like a little truss structure. I had to make it that way. I had to make it appropriately strong, stable, but also light. So it looks like a truss structure, but it has this weight problem because we are a little heavier than carbon bikes where it's certainly not possible to compete with the weight of a carbon frame, of course. Um, but uh, we have is the longevity because the material just doesn't break down. What was your motivation, Ben, to undertake such a challenging and innovative project like this? 
The motivation was certainly to develop something that was not there yet. Uh, the technology, the technical challenge, which I had totally underestimated, to construct uh, such a, a rear end that is really good, that is quite difficult. And when we drove the first test, um, I um, had asked Patrick, um, who had been a professional biker for five years on a mountain bike enduro, and he uh, took the first test. And when and he was supposed to do the first uh, test drive. We uh, took, you know, the little place in Ilmenau, went into a small patch of forest, quite a part that nobody would see it. And he drove it for the first time. He pushed the bike up there, down and up again. And he was so excited when he gave me the feedback. It's, it still gives me goosebumps. Think about it. He was so enthusiastic and said, I can be absolutely proud of myself that uh, for having developed such a bike. And he has ridden bikes from other manufacturers, from big, you know, huge brands. And they were n no, you know, nowhere near as good as this bike. And this statement was amazing. I would never have thought that I would uh, have such a success with the first hit. Of course, um, that was the motivation to keep going. How does someone get their hands on a bike like this, Bernd? Is the bike available for purchase? Uh, yeah, I'll find yes, it. on the internet side, www.phrasebike.de, the frame can be ordered, single frame also as a complete bike, and that is available in different colors, anodized, and also in the normal aluminum look, and as I said, uh, that can be ordered anytime. Where did the name F Race Bike come from, Bert? Yes, that was also a process that was running around my head from the very beginning, but I never had the, the right, the igniting idea. And Patrick, the first test driver, uh, he was actually the one to come up with it. I think it's a brilliant idea because it's a kind of a play of, um, of um, words in German. Phrase sounds like milling in German, but then you have the F for race. Uh, so this is the name is F160. This is a type and race behind an F race in German indicates that the milk bike um, so it actually is a great match but the name is actually a phrase can you describe the technical details of the bike for us our bike is, um, so to speak, an enduro. And enduro already says that we have a suspension travel of 160 millimeter front and rear. Uh, we have a, a steering angle of 65 degrees. And of course, take these um, aircraft aluminum 7075 and are thus at a weight of uh, 6.2 kilograms for the frame and um, about um, 70 kilograms for the entire uh, bike, depending on the equipment. Does such a bike with such a unique manufacturing process cost? The frame costs 5,500 euros at the moment, and the complete bike costs from 9,000 to 11,500 euros. These are the current prices at the moment. That sounds very reasonable for something so unique as the F Race bike. The bike is, as you can see, very individual um, for everyone, and it will certainly only be produced in very small um, numbers. Uh, since it takes about 60 hours of pure milling time uh, per frame and it will also be customized, of course. Uh, it will be engraved with the name uh, of the owner, whoever is going to buy it. We engrave the date and the logo. If the buyer wishes to have that, this is something we engraved. So this is a very individual bike, a personalized um, bike. So Bernd, tell us, how did Sarah Tizit help support you for this challenging manufacturing process? Yes, there's it has actually supported me right away from the beginning. We have been partners for 16 years and I buy my tools. Um, the big challenge now was um, in this single part area, you don't um, actually need this type of um, milling cutters, which have a large roughing volume. And, but now with this uh, series, and it is a pure series product in the sense um, that once it's up and running, it runs by itself. And now I need milling cutters that create an extremely large chip volume um, in order to be able to produce it quickly, to uh, process it in order to uh, keep the price. It's all about time. The price uh, is parallel to the time on the machine. 
So, of course, um, I approached my sales rep and we talked about it and he advised me. Um, I thought it was really great what he said. And then I uh, totally re relied on him and I was not uh, disappointed. And I used his strategy and his tools as he told me. And I'm super satisfied, must Thank say so. Thank you very much, Bernd, for the insights into your project. I'm back here with Marcus. So, Marcus, tell me, how did Ceratizid help with the realization of this project? Well, it all starts with a pretty long, deep and close customer relationship. So actually, Bernd Ivanov is a long-term customer of us with, with uh, whom we have a very good and close relationship. So after approximately two years of developing, he machined and produced his first prototypes. After machining his prototypes, we get involved with him and, and get in closer contact. So um, that we did the technical consultation, we talked about um, the machining process, and of course, we talked about the machining process optimization. So more or less, this was the basics, and from this time, Ceratisid was in. Very cool. What were the biggest challenges to overcome with a complex project like this? The biggest challenges in this project was definitely the material. We already talked about it's made out of a solid block of 70 kilos and the material is an aerospace aluminum, which is called 7075, which is a pretty um, tough to machine aluminum with a pretty high tensile strength. So this material or this aluminum is most of the time used in highly stressed components in aerospace industry or also in lightweight industry. But based on these benefits of the material, we can have a closer look to the bike. Um, Bernd Ivanov decided to use this material. So having a closer look to the bike, you can see we find all the major features of a lightweight component or an aerospace component. That means we have a huge number of pockets. We have deep pockets. We have thin walls. We have cavities, freeform shapes, and we have fits where we use our spindle tools. So all in all, we needed to deal with these high metal removals, as I mentioned already, from 70 kilos up to seven kilos a single bike frame. Cool, Marcus. So what tools from Ceratizit were utilized in the manufacturing process? Maybe you can give us a short overview of which tools were utilized from us. Actually, as mentioned before, the biggest challenge was this high metal removal rates. So we needed to decide to use some tools where we can achieve this high metal removal rates. So a couple of tools I brought with me. So mainly we got four, five types of tools, starting with, for example, a shoulder milling cutter, indexable shoulder milling cutter, to remove the big material out of the phrase bike. We also used our CCR solid carbide cutters. Solid carbide cutters, especially made for trochoidal milling. We used our WPC drilling tools, solid carbide drilling tools. And ball nose cutters, also with a DLC coating, the same like the CCR tool. And last but not least, I talked about fits before. We use spindle tools from Comet. What about our tools from Ceratizit uh, set them apart from our competitors on the marketplace? What is kind of the unique attributes of our tools that make them so suitable to achieve such a complex project like this? The main advantage of our tools, and I would like to show it on the CCR cutter, for example, is all of our tools are high quality cutting tools which are coated with our dragon skin coating. Actually, dragon skin is a marketing name for our coatings. And in terms of our phrase bike, we used both coatings. We used CVD and PVD coating. For example, the CCR cutter, the trochoidal milling cutter, is with an DLC coating means diamond-like carbon coating, which is a CVD coating. And we have, for example, the indexable milling cutter, which is based on a PVD coating.
So besides the tools, Marcus, obviously Ceratizid provided the tools, but what other kind of support did Ceratizid provide to Bernd Ivanov in this particular project? Well, I would say our biggest support is that we have really one face to the customer. That means we are sales guys, application engineers, we can do the technical consultation and we can do the process optimization. And of course we can sell the tools. But all in all, this process optimization thing was one of the biggest challenges for us. So talking about a normal conventional milling process, especially in the aluminum industry, we are talking about solid carbide tools. Of course, solid carbide tool, solid carbide end mill, for example, is similar like this one. But usually we are talking about co conventional milling processes. We are talking about just about one times D uh, depth of cut. We are talking about full slot into the material. We are talking about ramping. But by just implementing one more tool, our solid carbide drill, we do first the drilling of the pockets. Let me show you an example at the bike. We are doing the drilling of the pockets and then we use our CCR cutter to go into the pocket and by trohoidal milling, we finish these pockets. What means trohoidal milling? I talked about the conventional milling. That means we are talking about small depth of cut, slower cutting speeds. Here we are talking about three times the depth of cut. That means up to 30 millimeters depth of cut with just an like what we have here, eight millimeters solid carbide end mill. And we are talking about, due to the fact of the limits of the meshing tool, we're talking about approximately, um, and we see cutting speed of 300 meters per minute and a table feed rates of 2000 millimeters per minute. Actually, that's really a big success to implement such in state-of-the-art process for lightweight machining and for aerospace machining into such a conventional, normal standard process. And talking about numbers, we saved 60% cycle time for him. And that's a huge value and a huge number. So let's talk a little bit about the coatings. I mean, obviously some of these tools are coated and suited well for aluminum, um, but I heard that there was some kind of trick with uh, stainless steel grade being utilized for an aluminum part. Right. So actually I talked about the coatings in the beginning. <clears throat> we used for this project both. We used CVD coated tools and PVD coated tools. So CVD coated tools was our DLC coating, so diamond like carbon coating. Actually, that's the very nice rainbow colored coating. If you have a look, a closer look to the tool, you can see we have a multi-layer coating where we have many layers on top of, and this makes these tools very shiny. So actually, that's a specially developed tool for aluminum. But we also did a trick, what we know from other customers, from other segment customers, we are using for indexable milling, our PVD coated inserts for stainless steel. Actually, normal standard aluminum inserts have a pretty sharp rake angle. They have pretty sharp cutting edge. They are polished and usually they are without coating. But in this case, we use a stainless steel crate and stainless steel insert, which is also pretty sharp, but its stabilization chamfer is a little bigger than on a aluminum insert and we have this PVD coating on it. And in this case, the, inter the coating for the insert looks like gray or black, you can say. And this helps us to save time, especially at this difficult machining conditions. That's really interesting that a insert grade that's ideally suited for stainless steel happened to be the one that helped us make an aluminum block from 70 kilos all the way down to seven. Marcus, please go ahead now and summarize for us what, in your opinion, were the biggest advantages that Ceratizit were able to offer uh, Bernd Ivanov in this particular project? Actually, as mentioned before, I think the biggest advantage was Ceratizit offering to the customer and especially in this project was we have one face to the customer. So that means we have a sales guy with a very highly expertise in mechanical engineering. He has and very big background about technical consulting 
and he can do all the process optimization. That's the first point. The second point I would mention in this case, we have a huge range of standard tools out of our main catalog. So we can deal with standard solutions with more than 50,000 articles from stock, but we also can offer special solutions for the customer. And of course, the third benefit to mention, I think we are able to combine all the knowledge from other special segments and industries and bring it into such a project. So in actuality, this particular component, this bike frame is much more similar to an aerospace component than a bike frame itself. It's a great example of how our Ceratizit expertise in the aerospace industry gets transferred over to another customer project. Thank you everybody for taking the time to participate with us today in our insight number three, the F race bike F160 customer success story. Thank you very much, Marcus, for taking the time to be with us today. And thank you to Baron Ivanov for the interview that we were able to have. And now I will pass back over to the It's Tool Time studio to Harold. Thank you, Harold. Did I promise too much? A super exciting topic and a really cool final product. But that's not all. Stay tuned because in a few minutes, our insight number four on project engineering with Michel Dautekunz and Thomas Geier will continue. If you have any questions or would like direct contact with our Ceratizit experts, use the chat function or the contact options here on this page. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again at half past five sharp.